here here i can uh, when i'm when i'm using the network benchmarks i can see that there is one two one or two seconds difference between the jgate implementation and the git implementations with that benchmark i actually saw uh, maybe half a second or less than that kind of a difference that too with large repository small repositories it was almost comparable but with uh, with this experiment uh, with each of the uh, repository that is the jenkins or the ruby with git and with jgate there are there is uh, a two or three second difference with for an example git with jenkins is taking 21 seconds per operation uh, git with uh, no oh, i'm sorry i'm actually comparing two different things there one one thing i have to uh, say is that i'm not going to use these graphs because i i myself get confused when i'm explaining these graphs i'm going to simplify them to much smaller i'm going to break them down to much smaller graphs for individual tests i have so the first test was basically just one fetch with the sec the second test the uh, git redundant fetch benchmark it's with two fetches so 21 second per operation 23 second per operation basically means the difference when we are adding the second fetch to the equation so the differences you are seeing in per second operations the differences the gain you are seeing is because we are adding the second operation in the equation in the benchmark so um, so i i'd say with the, the considerable increase i've seen is with the last one is that is the uh, jgit with ruby uh with the double fetches it took 268 second per operation and um with just one clone it took 256 but then again there's a, there's a problem uh the problem is the yes the error the error rate and uh and because we are averaging results it's it's always dangerous because uh an extreme observation might skew the whole result so that's that's one thing that uh, this is one of the things may possibly i could use uh, i could use another metric than average i i i actually have to look if i could uh, look at something like median median is not affected by the uh, variable the large if we have a large variability for an example if you have a 500 mb repository and it usually takes uh, 10 seconds to uh, fetch it but because of the network because of the variability it took 20 seconds and it skews the result too much with average i could possibly use median which would that would not happen with the mean it would take the uh, middle observation uh, so i would have to look on that uh, how can i uh, i would have to look at the metrics uh, J, jmh provides i've seen its throughput then i've seen average and i'll see the other one as well maybe we can choose a better metric if when we are talking about uh, benchmarking operations over the network so the claim that using a big repository using a large repository we could see performance degradation uh, for jgit uh, with the redundant i i i cannot claim that because the error rate you can see error bar is it's it's, it's high but but with the, with all of the results we have there is a second or a two second difference and the profiling results i shared i shared them in the platform sig meeting um i shared one of one result was erroneous because it it had a like a six uh, what i did i three or four minutes difference uh, between the double fetches and a single fetch that's that's not true but the other other experiments all the other experiments showed me that there is a good five or 10 seconds uh, latency added because of the second fetch and uh, one more one more hypothesis kind of an hypothesis i have which i have to ask you guys is that maybe i'm seeing here 2 or 3 seconds because i am running the operation in a jvm i'm not running it in a J jenkins instance but when i'm running running it in a jenkins instance there might be some overheads which would be added which the environment is different basically that's but uh, i also i think i assume that the uh, with cli get the the operation is independent the instance instances um, behavior so uh, with that possibility that okay with, with the jenkins instance the performance might differ uh, would be considered for jgit maybe not for cli git that's something uh, mark and fran and you guys can confirm i'm not sure about this I, but uh, it's something i actually yes 
I would yes, not ma'am. worry much about that because the bulk of the time spent in these Git operations, either JGit or command line Git, is done on the agent in a workspace. And therefore, the, the JVM on that agent is probably not heavily loaded doing other things. Okay. So, so I, I wouldn't be concerned about that specific one you just referenced. It's, okay. it, it, yes, it's, it's certainly possible that there are other things going on, but I don't think it's likely to, to alter one versus the other. Okay, because uh, Mark, when I was profiling the uh, instance, the Jenkins instance, uh, the second fetch, it was almost taking 10 seconds, eight seconds, not less than that. But with the benchmarks I have right now, I am seeing differences of one second or two seconds, not more than five seconds anywhere where I can be. So, so maybe I need to put both of those results forward and we can then analyze. Yeah, I, I think, the data you're gathering is good to report and if we say hey i can't explain why the difference happens here that i think that's still perfectly reasonable to say i don't yet have an explanation for this data okay i'll probably say that i'll do that okay so um so this is the second deliverable first was benchmark the second was the fixing the redundant fetch issue the third one what happened yes so the third one would be implementing performance improvement into the plugin. This is this is this is going to be our way forward as well. So uh, the thing we know is that we are going to provide a compatibility switch to the users. I've shown you guys how we can put it uh, in the configuration page. Uh, it's by default we are going to uh, enable performance improvement changes in the plugin. Someone a user can by choice revert to the old plugin if they want to. The second is the heuristics we 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 are talking about the repository estimator class, uh, and with that I also have I think we're uh, the time is over it's eight thirty so um, I think I'll probably write that in the you know, channel if it's it's if, if it's okay with you guys or if it's if you guys are comfortable I could discuss something one more thing I wanted to discuss actually I I propose go ahead I've got the time uh, others can drop off if they need to drop off. Uh, and you're welcome to describe it in Gitter as well, if you'd like, Rishab. So, uh, so I'll just take, uh, it's probably a minute. So this this was the demo. This is uh, the basic framework. Of course, I'm going to add the things I have discussed and uh, the graphs and uh, clearer graphs, not the, the default graphs we get from the, uh, J, the Visualizer, JMH Visualizer website. So, uh, so I'm going to do that. Uh, I'll, I'll share that as soon as I can. And uh, you guys have the uh, access, editors access to the slides. So, so right now it doesn't have too much content to edit, but once it does, I'll, you guys can modify it and change it. So while I was looking at Git LS remote, so we have uh, the, the method, method which, uh, which is implemented in the Git client is called get remote references. So I actually, uh, I found a class called uh, Git SEM telescope which basically is an extension point which um, examines a repository from a distance without requiring a local checkout. And that is exactly something we want to do. The examination might be different, but uh, the kind of examination we want to do might be different, but uh, it's, 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 it's a huge uh, relief and help for me because there's something I can look uh, up to and I can uh, possibly now the questions to the first question I would have with this class would be do I add my um, the things I want to do in this class because it's it is in a general sense it is examining a repository and estimating the size of the repository also can come under examining a repository the only thing we would have to worry the biggest thing would be to not break the existing cases we have while adding those things so so if if my changes or adding them would uh, change the current status of the plugin then to keep it in a separate class we could because estimation of the size might be um, i don't know it's not dangerous but i don't know if it if it could result any kind of uh, issues we have not thought about i could have a separate class for it but this seems like a great place to uh, add those things now, uh, the gate SEM telescope, uh, I saw that this, this class is extended by, uh, it's actually 
uh, use in the abstract git scm source and uh, to the to the basic understanding i have the git scm source is uh, the implementation of scm source uh, the scm api which is basically created for a single repository we have one uh, scm source as uh, as far as i know and uh, we create a git scm object using uh, abstract git scm source this is like a, this is the implementation to create uh, git scm objects that is what i've seen as of now the the preliminary examination i've had on the class so okay. so i can see here that the telescope is being used by abstract git scm source to um, to get the remote references and uh, i'm not sure what it what it is doing it with it right now but it's using it so so i can do the same thing heuristics is uh, the first one the cache thing we could probably uh, we could have that and then with the apis i have to first figure out if the, the information is correct or not then we're going to review since rest apis are not used in this uh, the, the project we would have to discuss that as well but um, i can i can look at this class and make something similar so what, i just need to know should i add my functionality to this class or make another extension point so i uh... I am delighted you discovered this. Stephen Connolly will be delighted you discovered this. And I think you fit, you fit its use model perfectly. And I'm a little embarrassed that I didn't point you to this initially. Well done, Rishab. That's I think because, it's my job, Mark, to explain. Well, and, and well, well, you did a brilliant job of it. So, so this looks exactly like what you need. I would assume, but again, this is from my inexperience. I would assume that you want to provide an implementation of this thing and use it i uh, use that implementation to do the you you, you would you use git scm telescope but you are welcome to add to it if that will help you right if, if this is not some you're not allowed to change it the person who created this class is in my world a genius so so you need to uh, he's absolutely fundamentally brilliant and and so you should think very carefully before you modify this my code looks like a mortal wrote it, right? It looks like somebody who, who is still learning, still struggling. Stephen, who wrote this particular code, is, is over the top brilliant in doing things. So, so absolutely, this is a great place to work and a great place for you to think about, should I insert it here or should I create an implementation that uses this abstract class? And I'm not sure I'm the right one to guide you. Fran is probably much better suited or Justin in terms of deciding which layer you put it at. But you've, you've chosen a brilliant class to look at. And, and SCM Telescope with its objective of getting information about a repository without a local checkout seems to fit exactly with what you're trying to do with heuristics, right? Yes, we'll, yes, we'll take can. the cache if we got it because that's the most reliable. But if we don't have a cache, SCM Telescope gives us a way to go looking at the thing and express that as a concept. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, okay. So, uh, Fran and Justin, do you guys have uh, any uh, advice you would like to give me before I explore more SCM Telescope? Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree, agree with Mark. Mark. I think this is a uh, really good path to uh, look at. Uh, for this, uh, so I, guess I guess I'd, I'd say, say like, like I think also, also I like mark, mark probably play around with this, see what you need out of it, uh, see what, what might, might be missing versus like, like what you already have, have here, and then uh, yeah, yeah, and then I think placement and stuff would probably be a result, a result of what what, what the answers to those questions would be. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I'm going to explore this class more and then uh, possibly the easiest thing for me to do would be to add the heuristics here, but um, we will we'll discuss that in much later, uh, greater depth once I explore the class more. So, uh, so yes, thank you for, thank you guys for giving your extra time and the time you guys give usually. So um, I'm going to re refine the presentation and then uh, you guys can review it whenever you guys have the time. Now, how long is the, as I looked at your slides, I thought, wow, this is an hour or more of Rishab talking. 
do you know how long they're allocating to you to do the presentation? Do they give you an hour? Do they give you? I actually wanted to ask that question to you guys because I could not see uh, anywhere where I did look at the demos uh, from the last time, but I, so they were taking 20, 30 minutes, but okay. it varies with uh, individuals, but I'm not sure what is the formal allocated time for the presentation. So, Maybe I'll ask Oleg. Uh, well, or uh, Oleg, I think Oleg just went on vacation today. So Martin, let's just ask the GSOC org administrators. I believe Martin Dianju will host the okay. meeting on on Wednesday. So we could yes. ask Martin, hey, Martin, or I would even not even I would go a different approach. I would say, Martin, I think I should I should have about 30 minutes. Uh, is it OK if I take 30 minutes? And then okay. let, if Martin doesn't answer, you just you assume 30 minutes. I wouldn't okay. go much more than 30 minutes just because I assume they've got other people who want to present. There are seven projects that agreed, need to present. Agreed. Yes, Mark. I'm going to streamline the presentation because right now I was discussing a lot of things as well. So of course it's, I'm going to keep it under 30 minutes. That's, that's what I thought as well. Okay. Great. Thank yeah, you. I agree with that. I, I think if I remember right, it was 20, 30 minutes last year. Um, but yeah, that always that's best to confirm. <laughs> okay, Justin. Okay. So I think we should, uh, we can, we can end the meeting now. All right. And I apologize in retrospect, I had not started the recording until about 20 minutes into the meeting. So the meeting recording is a flawed record of what we've discussed. Rishab, you're doing great. Thank you. I'll post Thank the you, recording, guys. the pieces of the recording that exist uh, That's okay. shortly. That's okay. All right. And Wednesday. So we will, we will talk whatever the day the presentation is, but we'll also have our usual session or is does our usual session collide next week with the presentations i think they haven't decided the uh, exact timings for the presentation and they are going to have it in two batches so not all of the guys are going to present at the same day they'll have it on july 1 and for july 2 they haven't decided the times but uh, three students may be on the first date or three or four more on the second one that's that's I how see. All right, so we are we are currently scheduled the 30 minutes prior to that meeting. To, so the, the phase one demos will be 30 minutes, will, will be exactly after our scheduled time on Wednesday. Do we as a group of mentors want to meet on Wednesday or do we allow you that time to, to have final preparation without the mentors? What, we could either cancel Wednesday's meeting in favor of you getting using the time to prepare or we could have the meeting with the entire focus being 10 or 15 minutes of looking one last time at your material before you present. What do you prefer, Rishab? Do you want to meet Wednesday or not? I think uh, I can meet for 10, we, can, we could meet for 10, 15 minutes before the, uh, it wouldn't harm to get a review before presenting. But okay. uh, I'm, I'm okay both ways, actually. I don't have a problem because you guys will review the presentation, uh, Google Slides, and I think I've given uh, a fair estimation of what I'm going to say. So uh, if you guys think that uh, it needs a review before the, the final presentation, then it's, it's okay with me. Okay, uh, let's, let's do the meeting then. Let's do the meeting. It's, you, you, you've given us the flexibility. I'm prone to say, let's do the meeting. We'll talk okay. one more time and, and we can always stop it early if, if we feel a need to stop it early. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say, say if, if you, you uh, if, if we, we have a meeting and like you feel like, like you want to just prepare, prepare some more, maybe we, we do five, five ten minutes or something, and say, say okay. <laughs> sure, sure. Good, good luck. Then. <laughs> you thank, well. you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks, Rishab. Have a great weekend. Thank you, thank you very, very Thanks much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Phil.